Okay, so this video, and hello people, sorry if I forgot to say hello, this video is on how to quickly graph the transformations of a sinusoidal curve, a sine or so cosine curve, using mapping notation, how to make transformations to it. Now this is part two because the earlier video talked about um, the amplitude, it talked about the vertical and horizontal translations, or phase shift as some teachers call it. This video is focusing on something that we recently talked about, which is the period of one of these sine curves. Okay, so what do you do if you're using mapping notation? And by the way, I hope you're not just jumping to this video and hearing me say mapping notation, because it's going to be a little confusing if you do that. Mapping notation is when you think about what happens to every point on the sine curve with regards to x and y. What happens to each one of those points when this equation is the result of that transformation? So like that 2 right here, for example, we have to recognize that that 2, because it's right in front of x, it's a coefficient of x here, it's going to affect the period of this uh, curve. So let's just quickly think about that first. I'll think about it in blue, okay? In the last lesson we learned that when you have a 2 here, that instead of the, well, I'll do it really quickly, Inst instead, of, um, instead of the period being 360 degrees like it normally is, what you do is you divide by k, which is the value in front of x, which is 2 in this case, and you end up with 180 degrees as the period. 180 degrees is half as long, it's half as long as the normal period for sine, which was 360 degrees, okay? So one rule that uh, math textbooks will often tell you is you just take the reciprocal of whatever is here. So if you see a 2 there, then it's going to be half of the the original period, okay? If there were a 3 here, then it would be one-third of the original period. Let's, uh, let's keep it coming here. What if, in front of k, what if you had, instead of a 2 there, what if you had a 1 half x to begin with? What if you had 1 half there? Well, you just flip it because it's going to be twice as long as before, okay? So let's quickly go back here, and we'll write in purple again. What's happening to the x values when we have a number right here? Well, what you do in, in reality is we flip this, so it's 1 half, and you multiply that by x. So the original x value multiplied by 1 half would mean you're halving each one of those, okay? And the y values would stay exactly the same as before, okay? We're not doing anything to the y values here. There's nothing in the front here or there's nothing at the end, there's no plus or minus a number on the end, like the number 10 for example, then we go y plus 10. But that's the previous video, so let's stick with this video. Now, do you remember we did something called the five uh, key points? And they started at 0 degrees, then it was 90, 180, 270, and 360. That was our five key points for the x values. And then the y value, you just think about sine. When it comes to sine, and I really should erase some of this stuff so that it's a little bit easier to, to look at. There we go. So think about sine. Sine always starts at zero. Sine always starts at zero. And then it moves upwards towards one. Then it goes back down again. Then it goes, it continues down at 270, it's down here at negative 1. And at 360, it's back to 0 again. If you forget, like I just did it in my head, but if you forget what all of these numbers mean, just punch them in your calculator. For example, sine of 0 is 0, sine of 90 is 1, sine of 270 is negative 1. So you just do that procedure if you forget what numbers should go there. Okay? These are supposed to be arrowheads. There we go. And for all the x values, we're going to plug the 0 where we see x here. So 1 half times 0 is just 0. And the y value is just the y value. Nothing is changing with the y values. 
very easy that way. What's half of 90? Because 90 is going where x is. Well, luckily that works out to 45. Not too complicated. What's half of 180? 90. And the y value stays the same. What's half of 270? That's right, 135. And the y value stays the same. And the last one here is 360. Cut that in half, 180. And the y value stays the same. What we do now is quickly graph this. So you get 0, 0, 45, and 1. Where is 45? It's right here between here and here. Where is 90? 90 and 0, right there. 135 and negative 1. And then we have 180 and 0. Now, what I like to do, I can see that this pattern here is going on, and I'm trying my best to make a nice smooth curve here. It's not easy on a computer. Most teachers don't want you to stop here. They want you to continue on the same pattern. So this area here, you could continue to do points like I did here, but that would be a bit of a waste of time because we can see a pattern here, right? It's 0, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. And you just keep that pattern going, okay? So over here, we're going to go like that. Then it's going to come down. Then between these two, which is right here, it's going to go down to negative 1. You can kind of just see how the pattern works and follow that way. That, that's not as much of a curve as it's supposed to look like. Over here, that's not too good. But hey, I'm not an artist. At least I'm trying. So one thing I've said in other videos is always label. Always label it. Your teacher will love to see it labeled. And there we have it. There's our sine curve, okay? It's sine 2x. Um, the period, remember the period in the last video is the distance between where the graph starts over again. It starts over again at this point right here. So between here and here is 180 degrees. That's what we found to be our period when we used this formula right here. Okay, let's look at another question. So here we have a little bit more complicated of a question. And uh, quickly, let's just talk about the period, though. The period is 360 divided by k, which in this case is 1 half. In the last video, we talked about how when you divide by half, that's the same thing as multiplying by 2. If that's confusing, it's explained in the other video. <laughs> so 720 is actually going to be the period that we get here, and that's why it goes so long. You can see one, wow, 720 is way over there. So that's a very long period. It's twice as long as before. It is two times as long as before. So what we're going to do is take the one half and flip it. Okay, you take this value in front of x and you flip it when we're talking about mapping notation. All right, so speaking of mapping notation, what happens to the x values? If there were brackets over here, then we would have more than just the period changing with regards to the x values. If we had like a plus 2 in brackets, then it would also move to the left too. But in this case, it's just 1 half is affecting the x. The 1 and the 3 do not affect the x. They're, they affect the y value. So let's talk about the x first. Remember I said we flip it? So 1 half really flipped just becomes 2. We have the x there. And then the y values, well, the 3 in the front, that's our amplitude. So 3 times y. And then on the end, we have a plus 1 here. And you just write it down like that. Then you put our key points. So it starts with 0, 90, 180. We can pick whatever we want here, but we're just picking the, you know, those, those edges of the quadrants. 270. Then we're back at 360 again. Comma, comma, comma comma chameleon. Then we got y here. And this is where we have to think, oh no, sorry, we don't have to think about it yet. We just have to, well, we do have to think a little bit. Cosine starts at 1 and goes downwards. So 0 and 1. And if you forget all of this, again, the previous videos show that so that you're not confused. Then it goes down to negative 1. Then it goes back up to 0 and 1. If you forget any of these, again, you can use your calculator too. Trying to set this all up. 
0 for x, 2 times 0 is 0. And it's 1 for the y, so 3 times 1 plus 1 is 4. 90 times 2 is 180. 0 times 3 is 0 plus 1. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing here. 180 times 2 is 360. Negative 1, so that would be negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2. Then we have 270 times 2. Ooh, 540. 0 again, so it would be 1. And over here, 360 times 2 is 720. And 1 times 3 is 3, plus 1 is 4. All right, now we can quickly graph this. So 0 and 4. 180 and 1, 360 and negative 2, I'm actually kind of confused by that one, it seems to, hmm, um, let's we'll see if this makes sense, I may have made a mistake, um, 540 and 1, and 720 and 4. So hopefully you can see with me that I'm seeing a pattern here. There's no way that this one here is correct. And 0 and 4 is, is not here. It's, it's right here. I hope that didn't throw you off. Because then I'd have to go and redo this video. So please forgive me. It's 0 and 4, which is right up here. And then, oh man, I'm so flustered by that mistake, I can't even connect the dots. But that's... Oof, that's the best I can do. I'm going to put arrows on the end. Don't forget to label this thing. 3 cos 1 half x plus 1. And there we have our sine, or sorry, our cosine curve. It's still called a sinusoidal curve. And we've labeled it. And uh, let's see, I think that's about it. Um, but again, if you ever get something like this, y equals 3 cos, I don't know, 1 half. But then in brackets, it's x plus 30 minus 5. Remember, if you were to do, if you were to do a mapping notation for this, it would look like this. Remember, you take the reciprocal of this, so it would be 2. and Instead of plus 30, in reality, it's moving left 30, so minus 30. Then for the y values, you'd have 3y. And then on the end here, we have minus 5. Just in case you were going to ask that question for a more complicated equation like that, here's what you would do to do mapping notation. And then you would continue on with your 0, 90, blah, 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 like that. Okay? Hopefully that helps. Have a great day. I'm going to stop talking now.